Hi everyone, in this lecture we are going to talk about CSS Combinator selectors. So by now we know that whenever you want to apply any kind of styling uh, through CSS, you need to be working with some sort of a selector. Now, we in CSS, we also have combinators which specify the relationship between one or more elements and they are represented or denoted by selectors. Uh, some people call them CSS combinators. I would like to call them CSS combinator selectors, just to clarify this entire idea. Uh, we are going to talk about them. There are four combinators and we are going to discuss every one in detail. So let's create an article element and I'm going to give it an ID, which is going to be, uh, let's say, tech. I'm just going to say tech. And in here, I'm going to provide in an H1 that is going to say green technology. After the H1, I'm going to provide a paragraph with lorem, let's say, 50. So we have 50 words in here. After the paragraph, uh, I'm going to create an anchor element. And I'm going to provide a number sign here. The number sign uh, says whenever you click on this link, it is going to redirect to the same page, meaning it's not going to go anywhere. So I'm going to say read more. Uh, I'm going to create a div after that. And I'm going to say paragraph, hey, there. There we go. Now the structure, uh, the reason that I provided an anchor tag, these uh, elements that I'm trying to provide here, they are on purpose. And I, the reason for that is I, I, want, I want to be able to show you how combinators actually work. So you need to have like a specific kind of markup for this to work. And I'm going to provide another anchor element with number. I'm going to say read. So this is going to say read more here. So it's just that here is the difference. And let's just create another paragraph as well. There we go. So this is our styling so far, uh, our HTML so far. Let's jump into CSS first. So uh, the first um, combinator selector that we are going to talk about is the descendant. Descendant. The descendant selector. The descendant selector is denoted by a simple space. So let's grab this article, which has an ID of tech, which is the parent of all of the elements. So I'm just going to say numbers. Whenever we are trying to grab our IDs, we're just going to provide a number. When it is class, just provide a dot. So this is tech. Now, this is the ID. Let's say you want to grab this H1 and you want to increase its font size. We know that this H1 is a child of this article. So it is technically a descendant of this article. When you provide in a space and then H1, it means that this is a descendant. Now a descendant can um, mean that it is a direct child, it is a child, or it is a grandchild. So this paragraph, this is not a child of this article. It is a child of this div, and then this div is, chi is a child of this article, meaning this paragraph is a grandchild of this article. It is a descendant. The reason that I'm, say, I'm uh, clarifying this is we have a descendant selector and a child selector. These two are different. So I'm going to grab the font size and I'm going to increase it to 55 pixels. So let's save that. There we go. The next one is going to be the child selector. Now let's take a look at which one cl uh, classify as children. So the direct elements within the uh, big element, they are the child children elements. So this is a child, paragraph is a child, anchor element is child, this div is a child, this paragraph is not a child. This anchor tag and this uh, uh, P element, these are children as well. But this paragraph, it is not a child of this uh, article. So let's say you want to grab that article. Uh, and you want to grab all its children, immediate or direct children. So this is a child selector. This greater than sign means it's going to grab direct children. So if you say, let's say background color, um, light something, light green, and let's give it some padding. Uh, like let's say 15 pixels, and let's just save it. And now we can see even though this hey there, 
is also a paragraph because this is not a direct child that's not been selected. So this is the child selector. Uh, the third one is the adjacent adjacent sibling selector. Now this selector is a very, very rare case that um, I believe in my uh, uh, in my Flexbox course, I used it uh, only in one scenario, in one um, uh, situation where I needed to style something. So these are very unique uh, selectors. You're not gonna, you will use the descendant selector a lot along with the child selector, but the adjacent sibling and the next one is the general sibling. These two are very, very unique. So the adjacent sibling, uh, first thing that you need to understand is the sibling relationship. So you can see that each element, this element is the parent. The parent has multiple children. The relationship among the children is a sibling kind of relationship. So this paragraph is a sibling of the Sichuan. This anchor tag is a sibling of this paragraph. Now, when it says, when we say adjacent, it means that the sibling, which is, which comes right after it. So if I grab this paragraph and if I say, uh, what is, uh, grab all the anchor elements, which are the adjacent siblings of a paragraph. It is just going to grab this one. It is not going to grab this anchor element because this is a sibling of this paragraph but it is not an adjacent sibling. It's not like a neighboring sibling, like it followed immediately by that. This classifies as a general sibling. We are going to talk about that next. So uh, let me put it there. I'm gonna say paragraph, and then the adjacent sibling has a, a plus sign anchor tag, and I'm gonna say text decoration, none, background color, um, Let's say light, let's put it light pink. And uh, it just provides some padding of 25 pixels. So if I save that, you can see only this one has been styled. But what about this one? Because this, the second uh, anchor element is not a sibling and is not a, an adjacent sibling of this paragraph. Only this one is. So if you had another paragraph here on top of it, uh, before right before this anchor element then it would have selected this one as well so this is going to be adjacent sibling I'm just gonna comment this one out and I'm gonna save that now the general sibling has this tilde uh, sign or squiggly and then when you say anchor element so if there is a paragraph and as many siblings anchor element siblings that it has it is going to select it so this is a sibling now no longer we are talking about adjacent this is sibling if you had 10 more than which are on the same line that then those were would have been siblings as well so these are there are like these lines uh, i hope you can see them in vs code i'm not sure if uh, another editor has these as well so you can see that they, they, these lines they basically start from the opening tag of a this in this case this parent to the ending tag and then there is also a line for which all the on which all the children sit so you can see this line if you are confused this line is going to show you this line that i'm basically highlighting it's going to show you where the children are so it's going to grab all the children i'm just going to provide the same styling just copy that provided here and let's save it there we go so both of them have been selected now by default um, um, inline elements cannot have margins so you need to uh, change their display property so I'm going to change it to inline block inline block uh, think of it like the best of both worlds they stay in line but they can act as block as well and now if you say margin 30 pixels all around you're going to see there is some space but if I comment out the inline block there is no space uh, so we covered descendant selector, child selector, adjacent sibling, and general sibling selector. With this, our lecture comes to an end. See you in the next one.